So what I have here is what I would call the top of the triple clamp for the forks for a 1968 Triumph T120R. I don't know if it looks the same for other years, um, other motor sizes, other models, but this is what mine looks like. So what I'm trying to do, and you can see I already did one, but it has these handlebar bushings here. And I tried to hit them out with like a socket as you usually would. And uh, it didn't really seem to budge them. Uh, what I actually ended up doing, and I know some people may not have this tool, but I have this press here that I actually pressed the first one out with. But I think there's another way I could do it without a press. And I wanted to show that to you. So online, I noticed that there was a tool that's basically a shaft with a milled down tip that'll fit perfectly within the center of this bushing, I'm guessing. Um, I decided that what might work is these two, I guess, reducers would be. This one would be a 3 8 inch to a quarter inch reducer. It's Craftsman. Um, I don't know if this body would be bigger or smaller with other brands, but mine just happens to fit perfect in here and it hits the inside part of this bushing and you're gonna replace these so this is gonna damage them you're not gonna be able to reuse them the reason why I'm taking them out is not necessarily because they're bad but because I want to sandblast and powder coat this because I'm restoring a bike so the problem I found when I did it this way is that you put this in here you hit it with the press in my case but I'm gonna to try to do it with a hammer here and I think that'll work also it takes this center part out and it takes the bushing material out or the rubber part of the bushing but there's still an outside sleeve which when i hit it out with the hammer i think i lost it might be here on the ground ah here it is so this part was stuck in there and you can barely see it because for some reason you can't really see that there's an outside ring here to the bushing on the top but you can see it on the bottom so at first i thought that maybe this would only come out the bottom, but it does come out both sides. There's no lip here that keeps it from going one direction or the other. So whatever side is easier for you to hammer it out from, uh, that's your call. But I think here without the press, which you know maybe not everybody has, I could hit this out. Now, like I said, it's just a quarter inch to a three eighths reducer. Uh, I'm not actually clamping it in this vise. I'm just setting it here because it leaves a space underneath where this can drop out, of course. You'll need that, of course, if you do it on your workbench. It's just gonna hit the workbench. You're playing against the workbench and you're not necessarily hooding the bush, bushing out. So if I take this, and I have a dead bill here, I could also use a metal hammer, but if I go here and see, since it is a reducer and not just a socket, it's stuck in there. It's not gonna fall out when you come back up. You don't have to have your fingers here and maybe smush your fingers. So I'm just gonna hit this a few times and see if it works like I think it will. So as you can see there, this isn't nearly as fast as the press, so I may cut some of this out, but it is falling down. So let's see if I can get that on camera. So that has receded down the inner part of the bushing and the outer part of the bushing are starting to separate and that's falling down further. So I'm gonna hammer on this for a while. I may fast forward, I may cut it out, but um, I think it is possible to do it this way without a press and without one, buying a tool and also waiting for the tool in the mail. So let me do that real quick. So this is actually just a quarter inch extension that's really short. Um, that other one's popping out there, as you can see. So I'm gonna give this a couple shots to see if it'll make the process a little faster. I have made some ground. This would be a lot easier if I just used the press that I have there sitting on the bench, but uh, I just wanna prove that this can be done this way. Uh, 
down. Let's get that on camera. Once in, a little more brown. Let's keep going. This extension will of course fit into that other quarter inch extension. And of course I'm hitting these with metal. It's probably not the best. You're gonna mar up your tools a little bit, but a lot of my stuff is just uh, old Craftsman stuff and uh, Harbor Freight stuff. So I replace it all the time. So that looks like a success. So let's get this out of course. The bushing out, it's uh, of course, like I said, completely destroyed. Here's the inner part that came out of there. And now all that you're left with is, as you can see, that center ring. This is real shiny, so it kind of looks like rubber, but it is metal. You can see that this side does not have that metal ring. This side does. That's just the outer part of the bushing. Uh, this I also pressed out, but I think you could do it a different way. So here is my tool of choice for that. Uh, same thing, just a little bit bigger. And I also found that the key to finally getting that out was one, using this longer extension. That helped, that sat on her further. It didn't want to bounce out as you saw happen there many times. Um, and two, I got a bigger hammer. I don't know if I would recommend that you hit on your tools with a big metal hammer. Um, it might mar them up, but that's what I chose to do here. So here is going to be my second tool. This is just a half inch. Um, so it looks like what it actually is, is a three eighths to a half inch adapter. You could probably just use a small half inch extension now that I'm thinking about it. We'll see how this goes. I may switch to something longer like I did on the last part uh, so it doesn't bounce out of there. Of course, I'm not using a press, so this is the first time I'm doing it this way. Let's see how it goes. Here is a 3 8 inch um, adapter. Uh, well, not adapter, just an extension. Uh, as you can see here, my adapter here has made it perfectly to where it's flush at the top. Not useful to me anymore. I'm gonna stick this in the top, hammer on it a little bit more. It looks like it's about out, so this did work. And there you go. So here are the main takeaways here. Um, so as you saw in that video, I started with a reducer. I quickly moved to an extension and said, cause that worked better. Um, this quarter inch extension goes in here. This is the center part of that bushing. Of course it's all apart cause I ruined it. Um, but it goes further in there. It's not gonna bounce out when you decide to start hitting it with the metal hammer, which is part two of the things to take away from this video big giant metal hammer that ended up being the thing the dead blow wasn't nearly as effective as this big hammer uh, I was mostly starting at the dead blow just so I wouldn't hurt my tools but they're just uh, you know craftsman tools they're made out of metal it didn't really seem to mar them up too much because this is smooth it's not textured in any way so that ended up working pretty well uh, also you may be wondering why I didn't just start with this bigger uh, half inch to three eighths reducer that just happens to fit in there perfect to hit the outside part 
of the bushing out. And that's because, of course, as you'll see if you try, it doesn't fit in there. It doesn't index inside this smaller part of the bushing that's the inner part of the bushing. And it's not getting anywhere. It's just you're going to have to hold it and try to hit with a hammer. And that's just too much because you kind of find that unless you find a good way to clamp this to where you're not marring it up too much, that you really need to be holding this. And that's the third thing that you should be taking away from this. Um, what I found to end up working the best is that you know if you set this flat on a bench you'll see and you might not be able to see it well but it's going to be a little crooked you're not ever really hitting straight down to push that bushing out i found that in my case if i kind of set it up here that was more straight up and down i was hitting straight down on the bushing that pushed it out much more efficiently uh, maybe you'll use some blocks or aluminum blocks to put under it just to make it sit there perfect but making sure it's perpendicular to where you're hammering uh, that seemed to work a lot better uh, that's all I'd say about this. It's far slower than using a press. Um, if you have a press, of course, I'd go that direction. But if, uh, you know, you're a young guy and uh, you're like me a few years ago where you don't maybe have some of these more expensive tools because you can't afford them and you don't necessarily want to wait for a factory tool to do something like this, well, um, there's usually a way to do it. So my case i figured out a way to do that and i was just hoping to share it with you guys and whoever's interested again 1968 triumph t120r worked well for me i don't know about other models but the more information that's out there for these bikes the better as far as i'm concerned so yeah thanks for watching